All right, today's video, we are gonna teach you how to finish your deck. We're talking beautiful handrails with drink ledges, tight skirt board, good sexy look, and some strong stairs. Stay tuned, we'll teach you all the tips and tricks. Very important, when it comes time to do your skirting, to know which kind you wanna go with. Here, we're gonna go with more of a solid skirt. We're looking for animal control. Uh, because we don't get direct sun in this area, we're not so concerned about air passing through. If you do get direct sun, I would suggest going with like a privacy lattice so you get a little bit of large animal control and wind. But since we don't need that here, we're gonna go for a nice clean look. And what two, two recommendations right off the bat. A lot of times when you buy this kind of skirt board, the end boards have got an angle on them. So they're not cut square out of the factory and I don't know why. So when you're gonna do your measuring and cutting for your skirt, Always make sure you trim your first edge before you get started. And then after that, you should be good. Now, if you remember the demo vi demolition video, the very beginning, the wood that was on this deck was cedar, just like we're using now. But it was buried in the dirt. And so, very important, you don't want your cedar in the organics. So when you're measuring off, leave an airspace. And when you come to finish this, if you want to finish garden and you don't want to have an airspace there, Go and get some clear stone pebbles or river stone and use that to build up behind your gardens up against your, your deck if you want to close off that animal trap. Don't ever push your dirt back up against this. You're going to promote rot and then you're just going to shorten the lamps lifespan of your deck. That works. I've got a nice gap under here. I can get my hand underneath. The other thing you want to think about is decoratively speaking, you don't want to have them meeting up like that. You want one covering the other. And I would always suggest that the place that you want it to be the prettiest is the one you want to put on last. So this is our street view. So we'll put that on last. We're going to start here with this one. Just line things up. Make sure you're happy with the way it finishes. Set your knee on there for some pressure. Grab a couple of screws and set this board. If it's at all possible, two inches away from the edge is a really good place to go. It'll help promote not splitting it. And this entire row of boards, you want to have the same height from the top. So if you need to, you can mark it, but I just like to have a steady line. I'll go across and I'll just eyeball it one to the next. Now the bottom board, same rule applies. Take a look at the entire length of the skirt. Your, your board that you're attaching to should be somewhat level. Take the highest reference, about a half an inch down from that. Nice and easy here. Again, putting this screw flush with the wood, you don't want to bury it, okay? This is a screw that you want to be able to pull out if you ever need to get access underneath your deck. So if you bury it, the wood will swell and then when you try to take it out, you'll destroy your wood. So this is a great way to start. And then you'll be fine to access underneath the deck if you ever want to get under there for any reason. The reason we're starting at the outside corner with a full board is so that it's pretty. Pretty is important, which leads me to the next point. When you cut your board, you'll have one clean side from your saw blade, and you'll have one rough side. Install the clean side out. We're looking for that consistency, about two inches down. So just the last couple of finishing touches here. Start on your corner, measure off to about the middle, and try to, try to adjust the ground to be consistent so the boards are all the same height. You don't want to have to cut every board up and down. Just take a shovel and clean a trough. Put this in consistently. When you get near the middle, stop. Start at the other end with a full board and come towards the middle again. And I'll show you why. If when you get to the middle, you're left with a gap like this, you don't want to cut a board to fit that hole that's that nasty. What you do is you take the total amount of width of all the, of this, these two boards plus the gap, divide it by three, and then cut three boards the same width. Install all three of those here, and that'll make that gap. Just take a probably three quarters of an inch off of this board, this board, and this board, and then you won't even notice that the boards are a different size, and you won't get stuck with a little sliver at one of the ends. And don't forget, finish your entire skirt before you start building your stairs. One, because it's really hard to work behind the staircase, and two, if you put your skirt up to this area, up to where the stairs are, you have to close the side of the stairs right to the ground or you lose the ability to maintain your critters. So finish the entire skirt and then it'll be stair time. All right, so now it comes time for the stairs and you've got a couple of options out there. Uh, whenever you're dealing with black metal, 
is for your finishing work, you can always go to the building store and they'll have pre-made black metal stair risers for you and you just screw the deck boards from underneath into that. That's a doable system, but only if you've got the same sort of height requirements as a traditional eight inch rise step. So if it's a little bit different and you gotta do something custom, then that's not gonna be any good for you. You can always buy the wooden ones that are come pre-made as well, and you can shave the top and bottom a little bit, but remember, code in most places, and what people are used to is that every step is the same height, rise, and run length. So if you start making modifications like that, you end up with really long, odd kind of shaped steps. And the natural function of people going up and down stairs is, a, is abruptly changed. So you can be coming downstairs engaged in conversation, not paying attention, and almost fall all over yourself just because the height's wrong. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure every step is exactly the same, give or take about a quarter inch. On exterior applications, I would even go give or take a half an inch, just to make life simple, okay? Now, our total height, including the deck itself, is around 18 and a half, okay? So we're gonna make our stairs based on 18 as our measurement just because there's a lot of unevenness going on here and we do have the ability to shim a little bit in order to get the height we want. So 18 divided by three, right, is six, I hope. <laughs> I've been caught on my math before. <laughs> uh, so we want a six inch rise. Now, a two by six is a five and a half inch and the deck board is one. That gives me six and a half. And that is pretty close to what I want, considering this is actually 18 and a half, and I did the math on 18. So if I just made a box, which I've pre-cut here, and then put deck boards on top of it, I end up with a six and a half inch rise times two, all right, that's 13, and off eight, that's another six and a half under the step. And that will actually end up being perfect. It's just lucky we got it that way. And one of the reasons why it is so is because the house had the original stairs built there for two steps. And so that was set up to be similar rise and run. And so what we've do, done by building a level deck is extended that same math to a different part of the entranceway. And so since the ground is pretty much level, we end up with a similar result. So if you have a situation in your house where you have two perfectly good steps up to your house and you wanna add a deck, finish your deck at the same height that your last step is and you'll be fine too. Now. I am thinking of the street. When you're looking at my stair, because I'm making all of this out of cedar, I'm not going to finish it with any other surface boards other than the top. So what I've done is I've created a little bit of blocking. I'm just going to map this out so it makes some sense. Okay, we can visualize this together. And the back actually sits inside the two of the outsides. Okay, so the only time you can see the joint is from the side of the building, not from the front, and you only see one joint, and I closed off that side. Basically what's gonna happen after that is we're gonna put five quarter inch board on. That gives me a nice 10 inch step with a little bit of a lip, and then I'll have another box built right here. <laughs> you start to see what's happening here. Okay, and I've got the little blocks here for that box as well. So I'm gonna build both boxes independently, put down the first one, level it, drop the second box on. We'll throw a couple screws into the skirt, hold it all together, and then we'll finish it all together, give it a quick sand, and we'll be able to take our last post, put it inside the framework, right to the ground, and attach it from all three pieces of the framework, plus the handrail, and that'll really make this stairs part of the deck and support the upper rails here with that triangle effect we're looking for. Remember, when you're building something outside, just see the end from the beginning, take some time to pencil it out, think it out, and you'll be fine too. This is not that difficult. Building box stairs is the easiest way to do it. It also takes a little bit more material. So if you wanted to cut stringers, we had a video on our, our video series on our last deck project to show you how to do that. But this is quick and simple. The math is easy, and it's one of my favorite ways to throw a quick set of stairs together. So I try to keep the homeowners in mind when I'm designing these things and doing videos. I try to use the same sort of building materials and tools that you're gonna have access to. There are faster ways to build framing. 
and you can use air tools and all that sort of thing with the proper exterior fasteners. But, to be totally honest, I know most people don't have access to those kinds of tools. And why would you? How often in your life are you going to be framing a deck? Now when you're putting your box in, before you finish your frame and put in your post, um, you want to just make sure you mark off your level. All right, so before we get going, we have framework in behind that we've attached our skirt. So we're using three inch screws to tie in. We're gonna four, five or six in there just for safety. Make sure we've got at least four or 500 pounds worth of uh, shear strength on those screws. And then we're gonna take this level off. And we also wanna make sure that we're not just level left to right, but front to back. We don't wanna be level here. We wanna have our stairs just, a, the, the back just a little bit down. Remember, it's always a lot more comfortable if you're going upstairs, if you're being leaning forward a little bit more because that's the direction you're heading. If the back is too high and you're off level, you feel thrown off the stairs and it's dangerous. So it's always better to have just a one degree slope back towards the building. Where the that's my, that's my, my level line, okay? So now what I'm looking for is square. So by putting my level up against both of these posts, there's no way that it's going to be contact with the whole side of the post on both posts unless it's relatively square. And that position is actually really perfect. Again, very nice. And because it's all closed up, even if it's out a little bit, it's not going to matter. I just want to make sure that when I put my rail in, all my wood's going to line up and it's not going to be opening up or in case I got to shift my box. Remember, if it dries a little bit twisted while you're building, putting your stairs a little bit off square may actually help you to solve the problem with making sure your, your lumber on your railings is all nice and tight. This post is already set at the base. We know it's a really nice spot. Put one screw in the bottom corner. Now what I'm going to do is I just want to use my line of sight and line up this post with the other one for plumb. I don't want to rely on anything other than my eyes here because this post will be judged to that post and if that one's out a little bit after everything we've done here, if this one's out the same amount, it'll be totally invisible. Come at this side. This I'm getting a little bit ridiculous with how many screws I'm putting in. And I'll show you why I'm doing this. The same reason we did it in the um, deck with our posts. All right. I want to attach this to the box. Okay. So now I'm not relying on the screws if someone is pulling on the rail this way. I've actually got blocking. So I'm multiplying the amount of points of contact that the screws have and making it very, very difficult for that wood to be pulled apart. I dare say you won't find anybody who's able to just walk over and rip this apart. They're gonna need some serious tools. So now this post is built into the frame. The frame is attached to the frame of the deck and that is really, really solid. When I get the handrail on there, it's gonna be invincible. Testimony to the guy that put these pavers down originally. <laughs> Not too often you see this, but I built my stair directly on these pavers and I have these two posts cut exactly the same length and they're sitting on the paver inside the box. Screw them together. Check that out. Folks, if you start level, you build level. So once I've cut my trace piece out, I'm going to bring it over here, I'm gonna line up my holes. I'm going to eyeball that just for posterity. And I'm going to bring that mark across. Now, this is my bottom coming from the rail. Okay, I'm going to line that up like that. And I'm going to extend that trace line. And you can see that it'll actually make some sense. So that's where it goes. Okay, you see how my line is perpendicular? 
And if I was to lift that straight up in the air, that hole will be directly above that hole. The gap remains constant. Now that makes a little bit more sense, doesn't it? So we'll cut it on the same angle. Yes, yes. I believe we have something we're talking about now. So now we got our box in place. Put my second box on, and I'm just covering it with the, the five quarter board. Just a, a thought here real quick. The framework on the second box isn't lined up in the same place as the first box. So when I'm putting my screws in, all my screws are gonna follow all the way up. Just a thought, because people see the screw heads, so it's gotta be considered as part of the design element or it'll be really noticeable. And of course, like with any softwood lumber, when you get near the edges, you gotta burn it in the wood. This board's not closing nicely, so I'm just gonna lift this end up and then start screwing on an angle. And now it's contact the wood with a gap and watch it close. There we go. So I made all my boxes the same size. I cut all my floorboards first. I'm lining up. So when I'm building this and I have to work my way around, I gotta do a little jigsaw work. I can set my two by four here and make sure that all my boards are flush before I make my marks. Just get this over here. What we're gonna do right now is demonstrate a simple railing system that is uh, attractive and forgiving, <laughs> which is important. Um, it's also incredibly strong. So what we have is our four x four posts. And remember our rule, as long as we're installing things really strong in the base and relatively plumb, we can manipulate the tops to close. So we always cut the bottom and top of our rails the same, even on the stairs. Don't get into that habit of trying to trace the top rail and cut it separately. Just cut the bottom, invert the board, follow the line, trace it out, just like this. So what we do, same thing, right? We dropped it on, we traced it. I got my measurement. Now I'm going nosing to nosing to get my measurement, okay? Because that's a great angle to work with. It's easy to work with. And then I'm taking off that half inch for the depth of our caps, okay? Now I've got that board, and you can see that my pieces are different. I've lined up the holes, I roll them over, I trace that bottom line across the top board, and then I cut it. Now I've got my bottom and top, and you can double check, set them on there. They should be pretty straight. If they're not, don't worry, we still have that forgiving effect of the screwing it all together. Now what you wanna do is just screw your end caps on. Now for the bottom rail, I suggest going flush with the top. And with the top rail, make sure you're not sticking higher because you're still gonna put a two by four cap across this. So make sure you're no more than flush, all right? And once you get all those screwed together, we can assemble the railing. These, uh, you can see this cap is very forgiving for putting a, a screw on an angle. It'll still sink flush. So you weren't gonna have any problems with that. I think the idea is, is you're trying to make that screw long enough to operate even 40 years from now when the deck is completely rotted out. These screws are still going to be holding on to something. It's a little bit overkill, but overkill isn't all that bad of a concept. So for assembly, your bottom rail, although we use the, the nosings to rest it on in order to set the angle, lift it up about an inch, get it off. The less wood to wood contact you have in your deck, the longer it will last. And drive that cap screw in there. I'll set this and get rid of the twist. Whoa! These are awesome. Now listen, we, uh, I'm gonna go through this again. These come set for a traditional 42 inch railing system, which is great if you're building something to code so somebody doesn't fall off your stairs and plunge to their ultimate demise. But what we're doing is just creating a safety railing for grandma to come home to visit. And she's not all that tall. So what we did is we took the top off and I ran it through the saw. This is just aluminum and it's powder coated. So, boom, we cut it down so that when grandma's climbing this railing, she isn't holding a railing above her head. Because honestly, 42 inches, <laughs> that's, that's hard. 
most older people don't have a lot of strength in their shoulders and they're using their bicep and tricep muscles when they're going up a railing. And so when you're setting safety rails in bathrooms, it's usually pretty low so they can have their, their arms straight to their body and they can grab something like this, okay? So if your handrail is up like this, even if she's holding onto it and she slips, she's gonna let go because she doesn't have the strength to hold her body weight if she slips at that our angle. So make sure when you've got a railing and you're thinking about older people, cut it down if you've got an opportunity. If you don't, make it extra wide and put on a second handrail for them. Let me just drop this bad boy in here, one at a time. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. It feels really sloppy and stupid, but when you get to a point where you're happy, just beat the crap out of it until it all fits nice. And then it'll all twist into place. Start at the top, line it up in the middle, set your screw, and set it down. Get downward pressure on that top rail. There we go. It'll help pull it nice and tight. And then do the same to the bottom. Get it in position. Well, I can't find that happy place. Here we go. One more time, Jeff. Here we go. Downward on the angle. So we have our entire railing system set up at 31 and a half degrees. So in order to do the top plate, the first thing you want to do is cut one end at 31 and a half degrees. So what you want to do is just get down here, close one eye, get a weird look on your face, line that up, and then mark it. When you get back, line up with your 31 and a half degrees because it'll be exactly the same. All right, and this point here and this point here should be the same as the bottom. If your mark on the pencil is wrong, go with the longest part of your mark. And then we'll double check because if you cut it too long, it won't fit into place. And it won't, but that's fine because I can cut it shorter. I can't cut it even longer the second time. Makes sense? <laughs> Ooh, no daylight through there. That is perfect. Loving it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create flush to flush here and here. Relatively speaking, I'm going to trace this. Oh, that was really well done. That was really, see, what, how many, what would I give for three hands? Ugh. All right. Do the same on the other side. Flush to flush. Now in a perfect world, this post would be just a little bit taller. But this is why the system's forgiving. Because we're using a five quarter board to cap all this. So I got an inch overlang, overhang. And as you can see over here, it extends so far past the post that there's no traditional line of sight where you can see if you have any minor gaps or anything around. So it really is forgiving for a junior carpenter such as myself. This is the part of the job where I really piss off the safety trolls. Ah, yes, I'm using my saw without a pair of glasses because I like to be able to see what I'm doing when I'm doing crazy things like this. Now I'm going to line up my cut. I'm holding my, my safety blade, my uh, guard out of the way. I'm going to line this up and I'm going to go for it. Woo! And I'm in. better. And from the other side and the other angle. Oh, I feel like I'm auditioning for America's Got Talent. <laughs> -hoo 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 -hoo. Look at that. What do I, do I get a golden buzzer? There we go. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Remember, I want to line this up so I'm not drilling into any of the hardware from the railing. Going down the middle, three spots, just so that it doesn't bow on me. My battery's starting to run a little bit low. Let's get this really perfect. A little torque. I'm gonna take this one extra step. I'm gonna put it right into the post and help line it all up. All right. It's not really necessary, but I usually put a screw on the side to tie to this post too, but I'm noticing that my 2x4 has got a natural occurring crack. If I throw a screw in it, it's just going to make it split, so I'm going to leave it alone. Here's my top plate. I need my 31 and a half degree angle. 
If I measure like this, I'm actually going to have something a lot longer. So if you want to measure this one, the way you do it is you roll it over and you put it up. Now you're measuring top side to top side. Okay, there we go. Cut it. And now we'll put our 45 on, cut our corners. Then a little bit where it comes to the rail, just for clean it up. Because we like our soft edges. Look, Mom, I'm without a mask. Same thing. Now, if it doesn't grab really good and close that gap the first time, just back out the screw and drive it again. When the grandmas come, you let them know this is all for them. And you get all the points you can get out of it, Max. Well, that's it, folks. We have just finished showing you all of the finished details for our basic deck system. And it's not just that basic. This is pretty cute. So just a couple of finishing touches here that take it a step beyond the traditional and you can have a beautiful project like this too. Just remember when you're building something like this and before the beginning, visualize it, map it out if you need to, take your time, be happy with everything you screw down and you'll be fine. Listen, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and by all means, ask your questions below because there are a lot of different deck situations out there and materials and substrates and code. So feel free, pick my brain. I answer those questions myself every day. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram. We'll see you again next time.